Hey, people. Hi, Hi party people. Uh, welcome. It's uh, well, the pod in the city. Weekly happy Monday. Roundup. Happy Ooh. Monday. I haven't seen John in forever because we kept... Oh man, you were Baby, I was edgy it all weekend. Been, it was the best. Oh no. It you has kept been canceling on me. And you were all you kept canceling right as I was like thinking about like starting to get ready. And then you're like, oh, don't hate me. I'm gonna cancel. I'm like, oh sweet. <laughs> At least so, it was a few hours out and not five minutes before. Right. As long as you give me like 20 minutes, I'm good. No makeup is on. No bra is on. I'm disgusted. You know, shit happens, y'all. Shit happens. Mostly, now we've created quite the workload for ourselves this week. Oh, I'm horrified. <laughs> I'm horrified. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. stay in there with us, people. So in case you didn't know, this is our weekly uh, YouTube live show called The Weekly Roundup. Uh, if you're just listening to us over on our podcast places, come on over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel, Pod and the City. If you're just watching us on YouTube, go on over to the podcast places. You're not and like the whole thing. join them, baby. We have a whole universe, the Pod and the City. You know, uh, oeuvre. anyway, mm. if you want, also hours. I'm talking freaking hours and hours and hours of content. Go to our Patreon, babies. It's popping off on there. And there you really get to hear a lot about our real, you know, real shit. I got a story this week that I have, oh, that I really I have been, I've been edging Amanda on that story. I really have. I know. I've been edging to hear it. And I am going to read, I'm going to read like the past few messages I've gotten from this guy that I went on one date with and apparently I blew his mind so hard that like, he will, every six months or so, like he'll just be like, Oh, I saw someone at the store today. It looked like you. I was thinking of you. And I'm like, you need... and he has like a wife. And I Girl. cut it off when I found out he had a wife this time. Oh. <laughs> I learned my lesson from that whole thing that happened last, you know, the year before. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to tell so that story too. <laughs> if you want to do that, go to patreon.com slash pod in the city now. Soon, if we can get ourselves. To 500 subscribers on here. We're so close. We had 451 the other day, and then we got back to 450. And I, I know someone was pissed. I, uh, I was. I think you can actually buy subscribers, but I was like looking it up, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to just throw my credit card out there. But like, I would be willing um, to do that. You know, here's the thing: if we can get to 500 subscribers, we could have basically Patreon here, where if you don't yeah. go, if you're not comfortable jumping on Patreon platform you'd basically get all the same stuff over here so it'd be really great not basically completely uh also well uh this week on our patreon week and just like that season one episode six diwali have you watched mm -hmm. it yet no i, I oh. usually watch them right before we totally yeah you hear ya. and girls season one episode six the return it's a really boring episode where hannah goes back to her hometown but i think it's actually pretty related you see a penis you see peter scolari's 65 year old peen I don't want to see that or whatever, um, you know, Valerie Cherish says. Yeah, no, that's, that's the question. I don't need to, I didn't need to see the whole thing. Her mom getting banged in the shower from behind, <sighs> like Miranda's mother. Stuff. Isn't that Miranda's mother? It, uh, I don't think we ever meet, Mar no, it's Miranda's sister. Oh, her sister, her sister. On my right. mother born okay. myself, the episode. And she's also the mom in Freaks and Geeks with Joe mm. Flaherty. Um, yeah. What else was I going to say? Like, so oh, anyway, uh, guys, yeah. that was that. That's what's up. And join, yeah. follow us on Instagram. John's in charge of the Instagram, and it's oh. it's tumbleweeds are all in my. Mind. What do I put on an Instagram? Oh, you like post kind of boring. Funny I don't stuff. Really like I don't it. Know. But something I do like is if you would like to follow over on TikTok, I've been minorly popping off. For my um, Open That Doll TikTok channel. I have 634 followers now. I believe last week I had like 200 and something. So, you know, we're getting there. You're killing if you, it. If you want to just watch like, you know, videos of, of Barbies, like glamour shots of Barbies. I am working up to trying some other things on there, but I'm kind of just getting my ground laid. And what are you doing on the ASMR that we're doing after, well, 
after this, immediately we're recording girls, then we're doing ASMR. So by the end, I'm gonna be Oh, like, see, I was under the impression we were doing the ASMR tomorrow. So oh, that's fine, I'll do that too. We'll have to, I'll have to let you know, because I have ideas ruminating in my head. Now, Amanda told me that I'm not supposed to address every comment someone gives. But I will say, over on our ASMR, someone did say- um, This one was pretty trashy. <laughs> I'm not rolling in here at all. I have been called a, a, a reina since I've been a baby, which means like a queen, all right? So this person's like, this is trash. Whatever happened to normal masculine- <laughs> It was just an incel was clearly it was, searching it was ASMR obviously, videos at four in the morning. What I'll say is engagement is great. I responded sure. back and was like, haha, thanks for the laugh. Because I was I gonna write, they no, they're busy, they're, busy, they're busy, they're busy fucking or like uh sucking John's dick. I was gonna write that, but then you had already responded. I'm like, yeah. They're busy um not getting laid. They're, that they're busy getting railed by Joan. Well, the straight men. Well, oh. anyway. Well, that is you know what? That is true. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's it. Well, that, anyway. that was our, that was our house. <laughs> oh yeah, what did, oops. What did you want to change that to again? Remember they're showing pictures of Ariana and Tom's house. Oh like, yeah, for sure. Okay. Now let's get into the hot topics. Now. In our ever never ending quest of being tortured by Jojo Siwa, a couple of new pieces of <laughs> week now. Amanda, tell us about the go ahead. Oh, well, I just saw okay. Now, I don't watch Dance Mom. I think me and Jody have I didn't really a either. couple episodes of for our Patreon, or maybe it's been requested and we couldn't find them. Either way, uh, for some reason, TikTok thinks I care about Dance Mom, and so does Facebook Reels. I get TikTok. About like if I'm watching a Facebook reel on anything, that'll just be the up next upcoming thing. Uh, so <laughs> okay. I've seen lots of clips. I mean, I've obviously seen the clip of Abby backing up in that wheel in the wheelchair. Oh yeah, when the mother comes up to her. Yeah, this is pretty. Cool. I mean, you also know the like JoJo. Have you learned nothing? Do you know that yeah. quote? Like, yeah, no, I, I know all the, them, I know all the know. hits. Yeah, but I that. guess there's JoJo is. I mean, she's doing the whole uh, Jennifer the most. Lawrence thing, the Anne Hathaway oh. thing, where it's like you need to. Anne Hathaway, I think, actually has rejuvenated her career. This I like. Her this now. is on another level. Oh, another she level. literally. I saw a video that where she claimed that she was the person who originated people coming to their concert in costumes. Oh yeah. She's like, you know, pe that's, I started that. Like, people started coming to my shows, like, dressed up. Like, and that is where it started. I want to, anyway, continue. They're doing a Dance Moms reunion. Yeah, right? which I guess, uh, uh, I just saw a clip where she's, she's there and she's, do oh my God. I wonder, did, I wonder if backs what the backstage drama for that. I wish, I want them to do, like, one I of, think like they do that with the Teen Mom reunions where they'll film the drama backstage. Because I, I, I feel like mm. none of the girls would even, I wouldn't want to talk to JoJo if I were them. I don't think they, I don't think they yeah, do. And them. on one of the TikToks I saw about it, someone's comment was like, you know, they have a group chat without JoJo. Oh, like, 100%. You know, that's, yeah, I would believe it. Um, but she's defending Abby the whole time. And she's like, I think she uh -huh. was right. Like I was uh, talking at a turn. I guess I kind of agree with her. I mean, I think Abby Lee Miller is a monster, but like I had a dance, the dance teacher for young Canadians was exact, like exactly like. We've all had a dance teacher. <laughs> That just and just like There's super sure. like like rotund now, and she would just walk around just screaming at everyone. She was just like such a bitch. And then I remember she would do this thing for the good lucks before every show, where she'd go around lick her finger and touch everyone's nose and say "man," which I think means like bitch or poop or something. And I always didn't want her to because I'm like I don't want your disgusting fucking spit on my nose. Then I found out later that the other yeah. dance teacher there was like a raging alcoholic. And I'm like, oh, that's why he smelled like whiskey all the time. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's it. So I guess I'll watch that JoJo Siwa thing. Um, well, I was assaulted by a clip that I'm not sure if this is new or if it's old. I wanted to play it on here, but I knew we would get like immediately burned to hell and back. Look it up. It's JoJo Siwa rapping Hamilton style. I'm not going to sure. call this rapping. I'm going to call this like Hamilton style. Well, 
don't come for me. Hamilton is rapping, fine, but this is not like, you know, 50 Cent. I don't know what I'm what going for. What song was it? Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, she was, bo- oh, sorry. She's I, like, I, had to I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche. Can you do the thing? Dang, go. And then she's like, wonderful, the lad name, very, very fine name, me. I'm like, are you? And she's but on she's a not, stage. But she's not really doing anything because it's already kind of in a pattery rap esque thing. So all you're doing is like performing the song, kind of. Singing. How about all you're the doing parts, Wayne's World? But all the parts that Freddie Mercury sings, she raps oh. or she just speaks. <laughs> wow. She speaks through it at that pace. Like, so, do you want to you know. hear her attempting to sing Freddie Mercury's? No. So- but she compares herself to Freddie Mercury. She, that's her inspiration, y'all. Like when so. she goes, ah! <laughs> Ooh, she raspy today. <laughs> okay, you just sounded like it completely auto-tuned. That is not what she... She's more like, ow! <laughs> Sorry to blast anyone's ears out, but... Wow. Yeah, Casey, Casey said, at this point, we just need a weekly JoJo Siwa update. I mean, honestly, me and John sat down. He's like, do you have any hot topics? And I'm like, no. And then he's like, well, JoJo Siwa. I'm like, oh, I can always talk about it. I always see her. Now, stuff. Amanda is going to just zone out of this next part. But I know this is this topic's controversial. And then going from the next room. So but <laughs> so it, there's this thing in California. It's called Stagecoach, which is like this um, country like music festival, right? And it has, um, it's kind of like um, Coachella, I guess, that whatever. And there was all this like um, hubbub, like thinking that Beyonce was going to do a surprise performance at this because there was all this promotion at Coachella for her Cowboy Carter. There was, in fact, on the stagecoach like ads, it said Backwoods Barbie. And there was like a photo that was like, an artistic thing, if you look this up anyway. They ended up, it ended up that she They did, thought that Backwoods Barbie meant that Beyonce was coming? Wouldn't they think that that meant Dolly was coming? Well, it's because I think Dolly was already scheduled and oh. Post Malone and like these people who were on Beyonce's album, Willie Nelson and Post Malone had like sets like really close to, like right next to each other, okay, or yeah. one right after the other. So people were thinking that, that she was going to like go in between that Come to find out, they did a whole fake out and they basically ended up getting people to like go there and Beyonce never showed up. So, um, oh, well, that's their own fault. Isn't that sad? No. If what would you rather I... attend, uh, Coachella or Burning Man? I mean, they seem the exact same to me. Mm, All I can definitely imagine definitely is... Coachella because Burning Man, you have to like sleep in a tent or like you don't have like... to, you can or an out. RV. Yeah. Well, what's wrong with that? If there's I, AC, then I'm at Coachella. I would be going back to my Airbnb every night that has a pool and a hot tub and all that. Okay, so Coachella, you don't sleep on the ground. Thank you, Krista. Coachella, because there's hotels. Exactly. I'm not. I'm not. You can camp there. I think. I did go one time. My cousin won a contest through Volkswagen for uh, Dave Matthews Band. Oh, at, Jody, Jody has a picture with him and he's clutching onto her so hard. Ooh. <laughs> um, they do this thing in this in Washington at the Gulch. I think it's called the Gulch. Is that what it's called? Anyway. Um, oh, no, the Gorge, the Gorge. And it's like a three day thing. So we ended up getting she won this contest through Volkswagen where they set up this entire area with gl- like that was all glamping. They had full catered food breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snacks. They did yo- had yoga, smoothie station, like all this bougie-ass shit because she won this contest. Okay. And you went. Amanda's like, what? I stopped listening there. <laughs> no, no. That, <laughs> just, you were, that story kind of like involved. We went, I was trying to say, you know, I went to like a similar thing where I did camp oh. out somewhere. We did have okay. to camp out. But it was like not for rent. Normal. Um, yeah, I would definitely, I might, okay, so if the heat wasn't a factor on either 
like either thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because they've done two Burning Man episodes on Doughboys where Amelia, their producer, she goes and she t- talks about it. And she's like, it's so they're like, how hot does it get? And she's like, Well, you she like shit, she brought a bucket to shit in. And she's like, I'm so glad I thought of that because some people didn't even have that. But she said it, it's like 115 degrees overnight to sleep in, and like the dust, Stupid. like you're just you're walking around naked, covered in dust. However, if the heat was not a factor and I was just kind of comfortably cool the whole time, I would definitely rather Coachella because I don't like music. Like I don't like current music. So um, I would rather get really high and like walk around and look at all like the art stuff in Coachella. I would yeah. be I I'm would like to look at the Burning businesses, Man. though. I think Burning Man used to be better. I think a lot of things used to be better. Coachella used to be better, too, when things were a little smaller and less taken over by capitalism. But there you go, baby. You yeah, I, might, so, okay, I would go to Coachella so. if it was, like, Woodstock people. Like, that genre of music. I would love that. Yeah, but that would be a lot. Uh, uh, do you want to? I, I want to talk about my weekend. I um. So I've been talking. About, I, I went to the Calgary Expo, and mm. it was a shit show. And the organization was just terrible. Justine is going to write a angry review because it was really stupid. Just like the whole getting in, getting your pass. You have to stand in this line and then walk across the park. But anyway, the whole time I was like the pat the two days leading up to the expo. Overnight, my ankle started throbbing to the point where like it, it had never happened in the two years since I broke it. It was just actively aching. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I went to Shoppers Drug Mart and I bought a cane and uh, it's 30 bucks. And my I'm, and then my ankle started kind of feeling better. I'm like, maybe I won't even take the cane. I'll probably be fine. My mom's like, you're taking the cane. So Honestly, within like 10 minutes, I, I said to Justine, I was like, if I didn't have this cane here, I, I would have to like go home and get it. Anyway, oh. I want to see it. This is my cane. And you better know that I bought such a cool one. Look, it's all paisley. Yeah, my but grandma I'm used to have that actually. Like, I <laughs> don't even mean that sarcastically. Like she literally had like, she now uses a walker, so she can't use just a cane. Yeah. And walkers aren't as cute. You know, they don't make it. Was, well, the cane wasn't cute either. People were avoid people were avoiding me because I was like hobbling around while Justine was. They were like, like watch out, watch out. No, people were like scared. I was like, and you're not gonna catch anything from me. <laughs> I just my ankle hurts. But we um it was rough on Justine said her body hurt too because it's just a huge concrete floor and your body is just like absorbing this. And so we were the big thing of this event was um was that math the cast of scream was going to be there matthew lillard was going to be there ski ulrich neve campbell dermot mulroney jamie kennedy uh they didn't get cox or arquette but um uh elliot page was there for like the vampire vampire academy anyway like all these like super famous people and the only person that anyone cared about was matthew lillard there was like a three hour line i think but that's just like no one was there for Nev. If I jumped into Nev's line, it would have been half an hour maybe before I met her. Well, you know, it's all over TikTok how great Matthew Lillard is. Everyone loves him. And they also think that he's packing. I, well, yeah. he's super tall. Okay, so here's the thing. Oh, by the way, Jamie Kennedy was like, I never saw more than three people in line for him. It was so sad. I, I, I've always said that I think one of the saddest things is like going to like one of these things and just seeing someone sitting at a booth by themselves and like no one's approaching them. It's so Here's sad. Here's the thing, they still get paid, right? Yeah, I know, but still like, yikes. Anyway, so Matthew it. Lillard comes out, just seems like, I'm going to cry the second I meet him. <laughs> so, and I didn't really give a shit, but like um, he first came out, everyone's cheering. Oh, and then just the con itself was crazy. Like I didn't just seems like you're gonna you're gonna be like the least weird person there with your cane because it's just all cosplay. And I actually kind of find it pretty adorable. Like I think it's really cute, especially when like couples find each other that love that kind of shit. I'm like, you two are staying together forever. I love when have when someone has conviction in their like loves of things. Like if you're willing to go out there and put yourself totally out there, I think. Bravo. It's just like doing yeah. anything and else. And the commitment to these, because me and Justine are both wearing like running shoes. And some people were in like stiletto, like huge heels, walking around mm-hmm. that concrete. They must have been, they, they must have not been able to even move like their arms the next day because that concrete fucks with you. Okay. But, or um, they're just Carrie Bradshaw. Duh. Three that, months that is, after her hip surgery. One of the more egregious. She... 
in the one episode, I just binged the whole thing halfway through second is second season right now, but I binged the whole bunch of episodes this oh, week. No. But there's an episode where she's running downstairs to like yell at her downstairs neighbor. And the way she flies down the stairs, she jumps halfway through, catches herself on the railing and swings off. And I'm like, you just had hip surgery. Well, I think she's trying so- to say she's like rebounding. Okay. Yeah. And I saw an article like just yesterday that said that Carrie Bradshaw is worth like fifty million dollars or something. Yeah. In the show, in that and just like sense. that. That's how much I'm like, all, like doesn't give a that. Show. That's part of the probably part of the problem is in Sex in the City. She was like struggle. I mean. Yeah, she was more relatable then. But now she's worth fifty million dollars. Like, yeah, okay. I believe her more being like kind of mildly successful. Like, you know, exactly. living, like living. Like she a wrote little a book. Paycheck. She, you um, know, does talk shows or whatever. Can anyway, we, so can we, we uh, show can... some of these photos or no? Wait, because wait, because so he so we got in line. It, oh, they're smushing us together. I was like having, and I had, I did get a chance to sit down a couple times while Justine waited, just like on the floor, just because otherwise my, my, because my ankle was like hot to the touch by the end. It was throbbing. I almost uploaded a picture, but it's kind of gross. Anyway, we're in line. Matthew Lillard comes out. Everyone cheers. He walks through. He takes time to walk through the entire crowd, high fiving every single person, and he is oh, like six that. foot eight, and like still is like tight. Skeet Ulrich also looks great too, but he is hey, too. Um. Well, so, they're in the most recent, or Skeet Ulrich was in the most recent Scream. Oh, okay. And he I looks really good. Matthew you know, Lillard as Shaggy oh, did yeah. things to me. That okay. did things. And him in Summer Catch. If anyone remembers the movie Summer Catch, there's a part John in Summer Candy's Catch in when he's like naked. John Candy's in that? Isn't he? I'm one of my, I uh, Summer Rental. I, I think, think John Candy first. was dead by, way dead by then. This has Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> Junior okay. and Jessica Beale. There's a part where Matthew Lillard, I think he's like in a thong or something. And holy shit, when I was like 12 or whatever I was when that came out, you better believe I rewound that 50 million times. Okay, so we're in line for I think two hours maybe. And then now they've booked this thing so that now the Screamcast has their photo op section. Mm-hmm. And um, so they had to leave. We all got like post-its with a number on it, like one through a hundred people that were still in line. So then we came right. back a couple, like an hour later and then they're like, okay, well like everyone line up, just every, everyone with a number, just you guys are on this side. And then everyone without a number on this side. So we're like, are you not going to put us in actual order? And they're like, oh no, that's going to be too complicated. And it's like, it's almost as if there should be a system where everyone had, a, everyone's holding a post-it with a number. They could have just been like, Okay, line up in in your order. You all have posted. Anyway, whatever. So we're yeah. it's another hour. Or so Matthew Lillard comes back. I'm kind of hobbling around with my cane just because I I kind of got to keep moving. I can't just stand. And I see he's like walking. Around. He like goes up to this baby in the crowd at some point and is like doing this whole like uh, politician esque like hugging the baby type thing. He's so mm-hmm. everyone at this point, the whole crowd is like Matthew Lillard is the coolest guy in the world, nicest guy. At one point, he screamed at the like workers and was like, "Stop pushing everyone together! Everyone needs to." breathe because everyone was squished in so tight so we're like matthew lillard nicest guy ever so we got up there and justine has bought the package for like an autograph and a picture and i have not and i am have i'm so like weird and awkward so i'm like i'll just go stand off to the side i'm like i wonder if i can take a picture of you and then this girl who was standing there who worked there was like no you can't you can't it's it's not and i was like oh okay great but anyway i still got pictures anyway so here's a couple of the pictures that i took from the side um Okay, so here he is, talking to Justine, talking to Justine. It's pretty good pictures, right? No one caught me. Okay, but, and then here's here's her and Matthew Lillard. Right, so, great. See, he looks good, this, right? is, this is, is why I feel like he has a lot of dick. Like He, like, is... looks like, he looks, you can, like, see it in this picture. Yeah, I want him biblically, I think is what they call <laughs> Okay. So Stay just- tuned, friends. Stay tuned for John's movie corner in half an hour um, because I'm going to be talking about sexy men, baby. Lots of sexy men. Uh, so Justine walks out and I'm like, oh, I was, I'm expecting her to be so excited. And she's like, he was just such an asshole to me. He was like a dick to her. You're not listening. Yeah. He was a dick to Justine? Yeah. He was like- Matthew Lillard? Yeah. She said something like, oh my God, I, I, she made him sign something for SLC Rock. 
And she's like, did you enjoy that? Uh, she's like, this is my favorite movie. And he's like, Re really? This one? And she's like, oh, did you not enjoy your time on that? And he's like, oh, no, it was my favorite. Like, all sarcastically. Uh -huh. And it's kind of like, oh, isn't that just kind of jarring based on everything else he had done? And he was playing Hamilton in his little station and, like, singing along to him. He was just being the nicest guy. Well, he's hugging everyone. And then he was a total dick to her. Well, and now according we're like, to her, she it. says he was sarcastic, not a dick. Mm, which I, I can kind of see that ruined the like whole a, experience. Maybe he was trying to flirt. Lillard is out. Oh, I would no. <laughs> he he needs to be inside me anyway. Okay, great. Well, anyway, um, that was, uh, and then I, I so, my ankle for the next two days. Do you want to? Would you? Would, do you? Wah, wah, wee wah. Did you do anything exciting this week? I didn't. I really. No. Didn't. I did a lot of work and other okay. not exciting well, things. Um, but again, in John's movie corner, movie I will corner. describe just some go of the on to it now. I no, Wait, no, I think we should do what are we watching? Let's I don't do know. It. You really seem like you wanted to do John's movie corner, but no, mm -hmm. you do it. Do John's movie corner because I don't want to talk. For so pick me, choose me, love me. We were on the break! <laughs> have some remorse. Have I some hate him. I think that I may be the voice of my generation. I am someone who is looking for love. Hey, it's Che Diaz. Hey, it's Che Diaz. Uh, we're going to have so. a new segment this week, I think. And we're thinking of calling <coughs> it... Um, What's Amanda's wormhole? Because it just seems like every week I just go into a wormhole. But let's now is that sexual seeming? I was thinking it was a little. No, but you know what? I did have like down a, down Amanda's wormhole. I did take a nap in this Amanda's morning, wormhole? and oh. I had like a make like a sex stream kind of. It wasn't really a sex stream so much as I had accidentally <laughs> made sex plans at two p.m. with three different people. Oh my god, these are the people. One of them was um, Mae Miller, who I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, the other one was Chris D'Elia, that comedian that got like super me too. Ew. I don't know why. I hit, okay. Oh, because I think he, I was listening to some they were talking about him while I was sleeping. And then the third was Bob Balaban. I don't know. Who, well, I think I'd have to yeah. see their photo. He's the uh, he's the music director on Waiting for Government. And he's also Phoebe's dad on Friends. Yeah. <laughs> Girl. What? That's about as sexual as I'm getting, but at least I mean it was kind of sex was in the dream. Do you want to talk about Vanderpump Ruel? Yeah, let's get into Vanderpump, baby. So some interesting things happened this week on Vanderpump. Mainly was this big fight between Sheena and Tom, where basically Sheena's railing into Tom about something, and Tom's like, "Yeah, but," and she walks away, and he's like, "Yeah, but you were a mistress too." Which, she which was. she was. I think Sheena needs to take several seats, and I need, and I think Tom Sandoval needs to stop talking for <laughs> possibly three years. Please, he is so effing terrible. I hate that man, and I understand that Sheena was a homewrecker too, and yada yada yada. But like, yeah. that doesn't absolve you from what you did. And like, I will not. I wouldn't. I would be like, okay. Now, I think um, Sheena should take several seats, but just because you did something doesn't mean you can't also recognize that that was bad and that someone else doing it is bad. Yeah. There is something, like, just, like, you know. And her right? excuse was like, oh, I was 22 years old. And it's like, yeah, but you were still an adult who, like, knew that that was, like, a really shitty thing to Flash, do. That. Flashback to that. I actually saw a TikTok this week that refreshed their com the conversation that Brandy Glanville and Sheena had Oh, yeah. forever ago. Sheena claimed that she did not know that Eddie Cibrian was married. She oh, claimed right. that well, their entire know. relationship, she had no idea that he was married. Now, I 1000% do not believe that. He is a celebrity and he was a celebrity True, before yeah. you guys ever fucked, girl. He was in But I'm a Cheerleader. Did you ever did you ever see that movie? I just I watched that recently, actually, for the first time. That Duval, that Clea Duval is in there. I feel like I see And see her the woman from that, Kathy Moriarty, Moriarty, isn't that her name? I love her. 
she plays the the woman. Um, I think her name's Kathy Moriarty. She's fabulous. <laughs> Guys, watch oh. But I'm a Cheerleader because Eddie Cibrian's in that too, and he like oh, is a really woman, hot yeah. like gardener type. Oof. She's in Casper and Kindergarten <sighs> Cop. Yes, she's in Casper. I got, I think that's my be, that must be. Oh, she, I, she's one of those people. Casper's like, better than you would think it is. You could rewatch um, it now and I be. will say though that I, th I fell for this too for for three months and then once again um that oh we're we're still married but like the relationship's over she's a total she's a total bitch oh my god she's evil and like uh like you know like that's and I believed it too I totally believed it and then um, I also believe that he had gotten divorced and then not remarried in the span of sure this man were you with a celebrity or no i was definitely not with a celebrity like uh, that's true Google. but i never i never but i didn't look stuff up either because i just trusted him so much i would trust that someone says they're like ending their marriage but from what i've heard so many times time and time again that doesn't usually equate to that usually means they're not uh i would say if they're saying they're ending their marriage it means but oh yeah I'm he totally did. this guy did so now he's ready. Are you guys ready? Are you gonna? Yeah, do it? we're still engaged. Um, we all we like we were going to get engaged and like try to have a baby, and we like messaged Latrice <gasps> Royale to officiate the wedding. And I'm like, we're like, if if she says she'll do it, then we'll do. It. But he happened to be away doing um like All Stars or something at the time, so like he never got back to us, or like he did like after we'd already broken up. So thank God. What if I was married with a kid? Ugh. I'd probably still be back again. <laughs> Just I would have abandoned that life. Now um, let's let's really get into Amanda's wormhole here because she's gonna go on a. She's got a I'm gonna lot blast of, through lot, this. Lot here. Okay, so Nick Kachanov, we all know him, we all love him. Uh, he was yeah. actually on an episode of and Just Like That with us. The uh, yes, stand, like stand up that she does and checks that ago. box. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. he messaged me the other day and was like, have you been listening to Handsome Podcast? And I was like, I don't know what that is. But they had been coming, like clips had been coming up on my TikTok. So I was like, oh, okay, I see. And um, okay, so it's this podcast. It's with Tig Notaro, who's in the middle, Fortune Feimster over on the side, and Mae Miller, who I knew them from this clip that always shows up on Facebook of them doing stand up. And they're like, oh, yeah, I, I dated this guy. The worst breakup I ever had was in eighth, grade three, and it was with Ian P. Peach. And she's like, do you guys know Ian Peach? And somebody in the audience is like, oh yeah, Ian Peach from Toronto or from whatever. And it was just, have you ever seen that clip? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I anyway, don't really uh, watch a lot of stand up, so I feel like oh, I, 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 I love stand up. A lot of stand up. Okay, so I listened to this. There's, it's only been up for like a few months, which I hate because you better know that I've listened to every episode, not twice, but three times, every episode, sometimes mm -hmm. long, more than that. Um, and I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with all three of them. Their theme song is in my head as we speak. Chatting it up on the handsome pot. We need a theme song. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so <laughs> now you, I, you look this up because you didn't know what this meant. And you were like, you like Fortune Feimster. Do you not like this person? <sighs> my favorite butch lesbian is Julie Goldman. I listen to Brandy and Julie's podcast. That's oh, the I love podcast I actually yes, listen to. I fucking think they are so funny, so bitchy, mm -hmm. so my type of people. I love them. I listen I can to them always I can always day. relate to Brandy. Brandy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, she has like such bad IBS, and she always tells stories about that. And I'm like, I oh, well, that's Julie, actually. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so that. Yes, that one. I relate. I relate to her. Because she's like shitting her. She's my favorite butch lesbian, is what I'm saying. Okay. So well, that doesn't mean that you don't. She actually has. She's talking. She's spoken on her thing where she's like, oh yeah, well, because she's an actress, or she acts too, and she's like, I think it's a thing where like, you know, if you're a butch lesbian. Your competition in Hollywood is what? Fortune Feimster, Tig Notaro, you know, um, Dot. Rebel Wilson? I As see a her as a butch well. lesbian. Oh, I, I kind of see her so. that way. I, I um, um, Dot, that one woman who was on um, Glee. Oh, Jane. No. Well, no, she's way. Oh, anyway. Her. So it yeah, I matter. think she's. I think she's fine. But I'm... I, I, I like her when she does Heather McDonald, and the and I only listen to Heather McDonald when Fortune Fiends is on. Heather or... McDonald. I no, none of us can. 
None of us can. I think she's, but when she has Julian uh, Brandy on, she's great. I've and listened I listened to when she, Julian Brandy. And on, Chris Frangiola is sure. great on there. And, and Fortune Pimster is just great on anything. She's hilarious. She's the Mitch of the podcast. Um, but then I, of course, went into a whole wormhole. I watched Tig, the documentary. Now, do you like Tig Notaro? I don't see I why think you, she, you could not. I, I think she's fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do I, you don't know, have a, I don't have, I'm neutral on Huh? Have you seen her documentary on Netflix? I've seen it so many times, just like no, throughout. No, I don't really want to want a document. Okay, but this is pretty fascinating. This is a fascinating, oh. fascinating story. She was like diagnosed with cancer like two days after her mom died suddenly, just from like hitting her head, and then she went up at the Largo and did this comedy set where she was just like, hey, everyone, I just found out I had cancer. And she, at one point she like took off her shirt and like, I think she was showing like her scars or something like that. And Louis CK tweeted about it. And like all these famous comedians were there, like Ed Helms. And it just became this huge freaking deal. Cause everyone in the audience was like, keep going. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, check that out. She's hilarious. And then the other is Mae Miller, who I find so sexy. That's They were in my dream. They were one of the three I was going to sleep with. They look in my like- dream. Peter Pan or something like they For look sure. like they would yeah. play a good Peter Pan. <laughs> yeah, but they also have a stand-up uh, or a, a Netflix show called Feel Good, which is so good. I'm halfway through the second season; it's only twelve episodes, and it's so good. I'm feeling like I may have watched one episode of this. Okay, it's but that's great. about how I roll is one episode. <laughs> and May Miller is just such a. I mean, I would if May Miller wanted to like get married to me tomorrow, I would do it. I would maybe raise a child with them. Like I'm, I'm so I want them around me all the time. Um, and then Tignataro also has a um, and, and that's pretty uh, autographic, autobiographical. And then Tignataro has a show called One Mississippi, which is on Disney Plus, and I binged that whole thing too. This is everything I did this weekend. Plus, I did like re- other stuff in my life. Check that out. Wow. You don't I, care about any. I mind melt out a lot. Like I play on, I play a slot machine game on my phone and not okay. look like, or just like sit in quiet. You'll just sit in your house in quiet. I could sit on my phone in silence with my phone on silent, like looking at okay. TikTok. Or I like, thought you meant just like without doing anything. You're just like, I could do that. Stuff. I could never. Um, I and that, totally that's, that's pretty much it. I recommend all those things, but definitely handsome podcast. It is so funny. And even the ads I will let play. Because they're cute. Oh, because it's them, right? Yeah, and they're, it's, it's not as shocking to the system. Like, it's not like a weird, it's really loud all of a sudden and it wakes me up. Um, so Kind of like our our sound quality anyway. <laughs> Do you want to move? That's, a, that's, what, uh, that's Amanda's wormhole for this week. Um. So, yeah. Let's get into the wormhole. Like, let's jump out of that Amanda's gaping wormhole <laughs> and into now. now. It just so happened that this weekend, well, this three days or whatever, I saw two movies in the theater. Yay! First oh, one. Hi. First one. Well, I'm gonna shit tell them out of order because one of them had me so hot and bothered, I was literally clutching my pearls during the movie. Ooh, anyway, let me find the fucking pictures here. Um, first one was called Boy Kills World. Now, originally, I believe there was a reason I wasn't supposed to see this. Like, I think it was being boycotted for some reason. Oh, I love but that guy in the middle. Bill Skarsgård, okay? He played- No, not uh, him. The one behind him uh, that's in, like, everything. The one with the beard. Yeah, he was He's fine. a comedian. Okay. The, okay. I want you to take close look here. Okay, so Bill Skarsgård, he got himself all worked out, all jacked and hot for this movie. He played Pennywise in It, like the most recent. <gasps> oh my it. god! Okay, so I know that there's several Skarsgårds, and uh-huh. I was like, oh, this must be the one who was in the one with a uh, Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman. Big Little Lies, isn't there a Skarsgård in there? There's an Alexander Skarsgård. Okay, Alexander so. Skarsgård. But I was looking at this picture and I was like, oh, he almost, he really does look like his brother, the it guy. I think the face definitely is creepier, but the kind of face, yeah. like, I would love, oh my God. <laughs> Girl, this movie, this movie. Now, compared, you'll see the next movie had more of my real, like my actual type here. Like, I see, I want to keep the photos up a little longer. It's like, who doesn't want to watch <laughs> Look at this, right? This guy got incredibly jacked for this movie. The whole idea here is that here, I'll, I'll show you the big one. 
All right. His thing, he is a he's deaf and mute because oh, he was okay. um so his whole idea is that this lady next to him, I think that's Fom could Fom Kid Jensen. Is that and is that the girl from Downton Abbey? Where with the dark hair? Yes. Over to the side and of like, the red one. I think so. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Um <laughs> he's trying to avenge like his his sister's death basically is what this movie is about okay he's trying to avenge his sister's death now the things that really bothered me here was they had he he could not speak right bill skarsgård and remember what he looked like in the movie yeah they had him instead in voiceover the whole time talking oh like, okay so I feel like they maybe filmed this one way and thought like the audience would understand <laughs> okay, what he's yeah. trying to do. And That's then it was like, wait, we need someone talking. Take a wild guess who they chose as the voiceover for this man. Why this... didn't he just do it? He's an actor, isn't he? Great question. He's an actor. Great fucking question. <laughs> he, no, oh. honestly, it was okay. Wait, let me guess. I'm not probably gonna guess the right person, but like, is it somebody who would be paid more than him or less than him? Like, is someone uh, taking scale for this? I no, no, no. It's not like it's like a Morgan Freeman type situation. No. <laughs> oh, no I'd say funny. they're equally, probably equally. Maybe okay, the other so... person's even lower. Wrong. All right. Drum roll. Okay. Yeah. H. John Benjamin. I love. He's got a great voice. He's As got one this of my man? voice. Okay, no, that that's weird. He's Bob. He sounds Bob like Bob Belcher. Belcher the whole movie. He's like, so what? I can't even. I can't even pretend to do a Bob Belcher accent. He's just kind I'm of like, like this all the time. Like you're telling me this sexy cut ass dude is like that's weird. So I went to the blah blah blah. Like that was stupid and illogical. It made no freaking sense. Another thing that made no sense was this character. This character drove me fucking insane. I'm not going to give spoilers here, but every other person, okay, mind you, they wore this helmet for a the, like half of the movie, okay? Just giving just letting you know right now, they try and make this into some kind of reveal. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. She tries All to right. wear this mask the whole movie. This if you look at this photo, Notice her photo on her mask. It says "die." Do you see? Oh, yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. I can so see on it. that mask, there'd be like LED words panning across it as she's oh, fighting okay. people. It'd be like "Let's go" or "I'm gonna kill you" or like, like a bus, like, like as though a thirteen-year-old boy developed the idea of this character and was like, you know what would be really cool? Put a mask where it says like "I'm gonna get you." And every other warrior. Now, this woman's abs are, every, like, if I looked yeah. like this, I'd be naked. But every other person who's fighting is wearing the exact same outfit, even the women. But they don't have a crop top jacket and sports bra. And she's supposed to be the most elite fighter. Um, she, I... she doesn't reveal to being um, H. John. Or is it John H. Benjamin? H. John Benjamin? H. John Benjamin, I think. Oh. Um there is no reveal to that. Based on this, I, I just can't, it blows my mind knowing you as well as I do. And then just you looking at this poster and going, I want to see that. It's just a bunch of people holding machine guns. This looks like, how can you, why would you go to this? I've never well, heard of this. Well, I think he's hot. And I had seen okay. the things where he's hot and fighting. I also do really like action-y type things if they're like visually interesting. Okay. Um, Great. This was very campy. Like, if you look at the photo, it was very campy. But there was so many killings, which leads me to the next movie, which this movie, y'all, this movie is the movie you need to see if you like sexy men and you want to see them objectified on screen without, like, showing their dicks and, like, being naked. Just the sexiest a man can look clothed was in this movie. And here's another one with, so these two movies. What is another poster with just a bunch of people <laughs> fighting the fighter planes in the air. Why would you ever, from the director of Sherlock Holmes and the producer of Top Gun Maverick. Oh, there's a this, John movie. We've got John written all over it. This was directed by Guy Ritchie, okay? 
And okay. the reason I wanted to see it was because it has my baby boo, Henry Cavill, in it. I love him. Never and it got heard that name once, maybe ever. I watch one like movie review channel on YouTube. His name's Chris Stuckman. And I think he's like generally he said this was a like enjoyable to watch. So I was like, okay, I'll check it out. Here is Henry Cavill. He has some meat on him in this movie, which oh wait, wait, what did they say? wait what john went off the rails with his movie watching you know what you're right i i, I justine I, I now i'm all i'm like i'm getting like verklempt because it isn't too straight surprisingly i kept questioning whether guy Ritchie is secretly gay because Here's Guy the Ritchie, um, Is that Nicole Richie's dad or is that no, Madonna's ex-husband? It was Madonna's husband uh, who's like the father of a couple of her kids. So this movie is called The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. All right. It's basically what happens in this is like during Nazi Germany, these people are like a ragtag group that go in and basically it's based on a true story that infiltrate Nazis and like kill like shit tons of Nazis. So like this movie the the other movie they were like killing like just tons and tons of people this boy kills world he was just like, killing yeah. every person this movie at least was like they were killing only nazis and they would just go in and like kill a bunch of nazis so that loved that but here's the lineup of these men now take a look here there's alex pettifer he's the one leaning here with his arm up he was in the first magic mike movie and i was like ew he's not very cute can I guess he, who this man in the middle with the pink is? Is he in um, Mean Girls, the Mean Girls mu musical? No. Oh, no. Okay. he looks like he's that. way hotter than oh, that guy okay. in the Mean Girls movie. <laughs> he's the least, like in my opinion, my least favorite is the pink shirt. But so there's Alex Pettifer. We have Henry Cavill, who again has a little meat on him, and he has this like, which I don't even usually like this beard situation with the handlebar mustache, but. <sighs> Dude, up here sitting down is Henry Golding, who was in Crazy Rich Asians. Okay. The hot guy from Crazy Rich, the super, super hot guy from Crazy Rich Asians. I've never seen that. Okay. There's a scene where, like, he's fully clothed, but his clothing is, like, all soaking wet. And it's, like, clinging to him. And, uh -huh. and then up here, up here on the sale is my new lover. This he's, man. He's, ooh, he's thick. Okay, this he's hot. man. Holy fucking shit, guys. I'm, like, getting, like, choked up here. His name's Alan Richson. Anyway, he's been in a bunch of stuff. I've, like, I've thought he was hot before. He's in The Reacher. Like, there's a show called Reacher, okay? Um, And he's in it. He plays Jack Reacher. This man is, like, he's tall and big. And he plays, like, a, I think he's Swedish in the movie or something, but he's, like, a very lovable guy, but he's, like, balls to the wall where he'll just, like, kill, like, he'll just, like, go, like, right in there and just like kill a bunch of people yeah. but everyone else was using guns and stuff and sure he used a gun some of the time but this man this man guy Ritchie was smart enough to give this man a bow and arrow because this Hi. man was in an outfit similar to this one on the right and on the left here damn okay. and he's using a now he's definitely on steroids like oh so and many like, steroids like holy God. But he's like doing all these bow and that arrow looks, things and the arms. Painful. That looks painful There's for a... him to just stand. Oh, do, I don't, don't think th that it would just be pressure on your skin at all times. Like I don't know, but I would definitely help him relieve any pressure he needs to relieve. Oh, is all I'm saying. Oh, um, by the clock. Now he he like pulls the the bow and arrow back. His arms are just like huge there's another part where he's like there's this humongous like chain because they're on a boat right and he's like hoisting this huge chain and like for not being incredibly homoerotic it's called the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare for being not that really homoerotic holy freaking shit guys this team that they put together of men Casting, whoever cast this movie, thank you. I, if you're willing to watch lots of people get killed, I mean, they're all Nazis who get killed. But Now, uh, I have two things to say. <sighs> really, someone corrected me up here that I kept saying May Miller, it's May Martin. I sound like a fucking idiot. Also, are you going to see 
challengers because that seems to be the talk. I of thought the about it. I thought about so it. So you had the option to see that, which Las Culturistas put out an emergency episode this morning, claiming it is the best movie they've both ever seen, and you chose to see these. I have a hard. I'm sorry. I have a. I have a hard time believing that Challengers is the best movie ever seen. Sorry, Las Culturistas, love y'all. Just you are gonna go to it. I'm. I, I will it. watch it because I hear there's like a love triangle type thing, and like there's like hot ero- hot homo eroticism, which is great. But these were more like um, ones that like just were like heart pumping type things. And Apparently, I think Challengers so is, Challengers. is more, it's about really. Tennis. Yeah, how much more high intensity? I find, yeah, I think it's because it's a sports movie. Generally, no, I avoid not, I think sports I think it's, movies. I think it's. I think there's like homoerotic stuff in it too. I think they fuck. I yeah, I think I there's think like. Anyway, guys, go check out these sexy movies if you like sexy men. I would definitely say the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. See that one before the Boy Kills World. But if you like like quirky type, um, campy type shit, try the other one. And coming up next week, we're going to watch Unfrosted, airing on uh, Netflix on May 3rd. I said around I'm not watching. Like Just, Amanda's watching. Yeah, that. you should. No, you're going to watch it. I don't have Netflix anymore. Um, you can't even log into mine because mine's a Canadian account. And I don't want to watch Netflix a movie like, with Amy Schumer and Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, there's so many more annoying. But there's some people that we like in there. Anyway, I'm gonna watch that. Just, pro- I'm sure it'll be hilarious to just like sit and watch and watch the train wreck. And then also, there's a show, uh, a documentary, two parts, uh, coming out at the end of May called Fallen Idols, where we're gonna learn that surprise, surprise, Nick Carter was kind of a piece of shit. Doesn't really respect women. What? No, no. He, he seems like what? a genuinely nice person. What? You, you're lying. No, you're I'm, lying. No, I'm, I'm telling the truth. You're lying. I uh, know I'm not lying. Step. It's time for TikTok. <laughs> TikTok's been popping off now. I'm going to start off my TikTok with a. Here's my problem. I've I've talked about this previously, and that is veneers. Okay. My main problem is not the veneers, but what's been, well, I think that a lot of people are going to look back and probably regret getting veneers because what what you have to do is shave down your teeth that you already have to put a fake one on it and they don't, anyway. That's so random because me and Justine had a whole conversation while we were standing in line about that. Like, people just look weird. And like, that's why Skeet Ulrich looks so weird because he has like- changed a lot of people's face. Like, it they can't talk right with them either. And I I, I just think it's unfortunate because then it makes people without veneers just appear as less attractive because you're so used to seeing all these people with veneers. I I don't think they're less attractive. I think what's going to happen is that they're it's going to like become like that people don't like it it's like how people okay. are getting filler dissolved now and all that and then people uh-huh. are going to go back and be like oh, look at i have natural teeth i have gaps i have you know like yeah i have a crooked tooth like i'm I have, I have one crooked tooth and i love it i mean i don't i have it, i have gaps it. across the front and i wish they I like didn't, the janky but... tooth that's one of my favorite things is not a totally jacked up mouth but i like like just a a, a tooth with some character well, my biggest moan this week is the rise of veneer techs. Okay, I've been getting a lot of TikToks about deep diving onto veneer techs, which is basically like a nail tech who does veneers, like out of a beauty salon. Or... They work at like Heather Gay's thing. Not even. Like worse oh, okay. than that. It'd be like they rent a salon space, like in a little tiny salon okay. space and then do it there. Eight like on Teen Mom. Okay. really bad. Um, it's like literally they there's a whole thing where people are offering a two day veneer tech course that you can take it for two days. And they say that you can then do veneers on people. Oh, Okay. I'm sorry, but I am upset about this because people are going to be fucked up. Oh wait, people so you can two, so they're they're going to go a person with a two day certificate, um, can now shave down my teeth into nubs. 
That's what they're yeah, claiming. They are claiming in this like ad, they're like, we, we're going to, we're doing a two day course where we will give you all this and how to do all this, blah, 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 blah. And then you can go from that two day course to doing I, veneers. I don't understand why everyone doesn't just wear like a flipper or like, I why doesn't everyone just wear like covers? We just accept our flaws. Yeah. Just like who cares. But I do love Barbie, which is the opposite of accepting flaws. So whatever. Yeah, it is no, scary. Don't do it, y'all. If you hear about a veneer tech, make sure that you're going to an actual. I will say that show Feel Good that you think you might have seen with Mae Martin in it. She, mm -hmm. uh, They lived in England for a long time. So uh, the first season takes place in England. And I always kind of love watching British shows. And this is, it's a weird way to word this, but everyone just looks more normal. And like all the teeth in the, in this show, like mm -hmm. everyone's attractive. Like they are gorgeous people in this cast, but they still look like they could live among us. Well, like every, also, even like the lead girl is like, also, okay, this is an attainable person. I think that's why I like watching older movies too, is mm -hmm. because people like their teeth are normal. Like they may have had braces or whatever. That was one of my problems in that um, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Of course, there was one woman on the team and she had to be right. stick thin. She couldn't, she had full face and makeup the whole time. She looked Botox to heaven and she had veneers. I'm like, this takes place in 19. What, 40? Isn't that when that was running? And she has veneers and plumped lips. I, uh, yeah. What? It's not, yeah. I think we need to go back to just, just like, you know. I would love that. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Ina Barton and uh, Jennifer well, that, Garner you got put together. That on our poster. I, it was literally just something that I saw okay. like last week. I'm going to roast Amanda here for a second. She's like, hey, get the poster done or whatever. She doesn't say it like that. She says, hey, you got to do the poster. With and a I'm thousand, like, is that all right with you? Happy face. Exclamation point, exclamation point. I don't think so. But I was like, what do you want on it? And she's like, oh, it's all in the notes. What's in the notes here? Jennifer Garner and Ina Garten. So that's the sorry, one Meg. thing you gave me. And well, then I next said, week, hey, can, can you put, can can you put, put some asterisks next to the, to the important then, part? Then you put, uh, hang on, take this comment off. <laughs> then here, this is what I get for Handsome Podcast. Can you even fucking see it? Oh, and Serial <laughs> Mom, which I forgot to talk about. I watched Serial <laughs> Mom and it was fine. Here's the problem is... <laughs> I had already worked way too long on that because I accidentally had all those images like blurry. I had to go find the image. I was already so fucking annoyed. And when I'm like, I read Handsome Podcast, I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck that is. Yeah, and then so, I said, and then I sent you a picture and you're like, ew, you like fortune fans. <laughs> this conversation was over. Um, anyway, can I talk about Serial Mom really quick? I watched it. I, I get it. This I like that it was only like an hour and a half. Fucking sweet. Uh -huh. I get it. I get the style. I get why John Waters is like, I get it. I get the that he's instant camp somehow. Mm -hmm. He's on that episode of The Simpsons where Homer meets the gay guy and he sells all that campy stuff. You've seen it. Maybe you didn't know it was John Waters though. I don't watch Remember when movie Homer movie. thinks that Bart's gay and Homer thinks that he might be gay because they meet that guy with the little mustache? Anyway, who cares? Uh, I Let gotta me tell you, I know plenty of guys who meet one gay guy and they think that they're gay for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But uh, I uh, listen, I just can't get over the animal abuse with John Waters. I just can't. I just can't. Like the whole time I'm, I'm watching Serial Mom, I'm like, this is great. Funny uh, animal abuse. Can't do it. What actually yeah. happened in the movie? I don't want to talk about it, but it's uh, it's horrible. Because I've seen that, but I can't remember. It's not Serial Mom. It's in Pink no, Flamingos. No, it's in I've seen oh. Pink Flamingos. Is it like don't worry. graphically murder something? Some animal? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's chickens. They like murder two chickens like on camera. So I'd be like, well, mm -hmm. I just think that's like not, it's not funny. There's nothing funny about that. Sorry. I'm going to give him a pass on that one. Cause that was what in like 1975 or something. Not that long ago, babe. Killing a chicken. Like of all things. Not I thought he was going to say he like skinned a cat or something. No. Anyway, <laughs> trust me. I, I would cry. I, I would sob my eyes out if I saw a chicken <laughs> getting killed. I would Right, right. I've I know, never even but... seen the scene. I just know it exists. Anyway, so that was serial mom. <laughs> TikTok. Let's round up. Do you have any more TikToks before we get into the main event of the week? Well, um, no, I, I don't 
think oh I the do. Gen the Ina Garden Jennifer Garner thing is just that Ina did this little cooking segment with Jennifer Garner and uh, Jennifer Garner is telling this wacky story about uh, uh, Ina's like oh would you ever uh again Janelle Brown energy on Ina Garden um right don't you agree Mm, I love Jen I love Ina Garten, and okay. so no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let. If you Jim kept watching Sister Eyes, you love Janelle. Anyway, Ina's she's like, fine, but she's no Ina. Sorry. Okay, I'm not. I'm not putting on the same pedestal. Janelle's son just died. Jen. Okay, so I should um, say that she. So that she. I should say she's Ina Garten. Okay, uh, sure. She Ina's has like, Ina Garten Jennifer, energy. Jennifer, did you have you ever had to eat something in a movie and eat it over and over? And Jennifer Garner's like, yeah, and, and I do like Jennifer Garner. I think she is. She presents as down to earth except that she's like stunning and also i think she <laughs> she does a lot of cooking videos where she's like cooking stuff and, I'm and she's like, like oops i messed up i'm like okay you probably did that take like 25 times but anyway she's like i did this crazy thing where like i was at a party at each line i had to take a bite of shrimp and ina you'll never guess by the end i had eaten 22 shrimp and i was like 22 shrimp I that's need that as an advertiser and forget that that, that was even part of the meal. Like, that's like, and it's shrimp. I mean, so shrimp, like, you can free. freaking pack away. <laughs> I mean, I could pack away some shrimp. But she, it was just almost adorable that she she was, like, telling the story, like, this was going to blow the world's mind. 22 shrimp. Well, okay. I think this came from, Ina does have a show on Max, and it's like, Be My Guest or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Nick Nick recaps it on Good Vanilla Podcast. Oh, because like, I think Stanley Tucci was on an episode, <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, it popped up in my thing, and I was like, I don't really want to watch this. Anyway, great. Uh, do you want to talk about Miss Peaches? I do. There I was do. a gal, a gala. Oh, by the way, Howie the Miss... Crab is still molting and still hasn't eaten. Oh, and no. Howie might, Howie actually might pass. She posted a video like saying, like, it it might be time. And you know, we're we're looking at all of our options and please stop messaging me, uh, demanding that I euthanize Howie. <laughs> Howie's nine years old. It's like all to like so this he has video to be of, euthanized. Well, because it's painful for it to molt because it can't get oh. out of its shell. It's too it's too big for it. Yeah, but what would shell. they do in nature? Well, it should have died. died years ago, I think is the point. Oh, got it. Got Only it. crabs um, are meant to live nine Okay, years. but the real important story was that Miss mm. Peaches was going to a gala. Oh, and God, she got so a cute. custom gown. <laughs> for the gala. Did you see this? And Dave Porter's like, Miss Peaches. I oh saw the God. video where he gets the gown and like it comes yeah. in and he's like, oh my God, Miss Peaches. Miss Peaches. <laughs> I don't like that man. I know, no one does. And I just wish that. Look at that. Look at I know. Sweet. And that is a cute little. This and dog little... is perfect, oh. though. Like The dog on. is perfect. Um, That little dress part, the little part, it, it, uh -huh. it detaches so that she can also walk around all cute. Oh, and like sexy, the little like, jacket. Yeah, oh. it, that, yeah, the little bottom part. Uh, you can take off, so then she's just kind yeah. of walking around. I think I'd like it better without the bottom part. But I mean, but she has to walk down the red carpet for the gala. And I think this gala is for some kind of like animal rights thing, right? It looks good like human, good human gala. Yeah, like animal. Yeah, it's for animals. Like an animal rescue. Oh, something. actually, no, I think it's for the rescue group that he got Miss Peaches from. Oh, nice. So that's it. I love Miss Peaches. Yeah. And that's pretty much all I've seen on TikTok this week. It's been a pretty low week, huh? I mean, I've been pretty busy on TikTok making my own TikToks. In fact, I have one to drop today. So go and check out my TikTok at Open That Doll. I love That's the one the you did of Jurassic TikTok. Park because I could tell that you timed it out where there's a roar and then you like blasted it onto a picture of a I screen. did. Or a, a, a I triceratops. Did. Yeah, it's good. I did. I'm trying to look for more opportunities. I do have one. Okay, so have you ever heard the sound on TikTok where it's like, Two bad bitches. Two. I. I'm not a rapper, so two bad bitches. Two bad no. bitches. Like. Oh. But I just remembered another TikTok I wanted to talk about. Oh, what is okay. with this fucking song? Like t the "Tell Your Boyfriend" song, and it's like, oh look, look, oh this girl God. with the eye. What is that? And also, the song is. Um, it, it's it, about it's cheating. Right, but the song is the exact song of My Muffin Top is All That from 30 Rock. I saw that video. I saw that video. And they played oh, them back Oh, did somebody else figure that out? Yes, yeah, someone was like, okay, oh, this sounds like, my mu sounds like Muffin Top from 
um, 30 Rock because it's like, my muffin top is top all is that all whole that grain, low, low fat. fat. No, you I want a piece, want of, a piece that. of that. But I just want to dance. Wanna dance. <laughs> I love, th- oh my God, 30 Rock is. Oh, it's amazing. So me good. And, uh, me and Nick did favorite. this really epic episode. It's still there of Squirrel Friends where we broke down. It's like a two hour episode. We broke down The Office versus 30 Rock versus Parks and Rec. And we had all these categories. And at the end, like two of them tied. And then Jody called in as an emergency tiebreaker. <laughs> it was like intense. Uh, and the, what the ended results up winning, are not. <clears throat> 30 Rock actually came in third place. Um, but I we but that. we did vote that one as the best the theme song of the three that you always sit through. Parks and Rec is good too, but it's long. But nobody's yeah. sitting through the Office theme song. But um, then it was between the Office and Parks and Rec. But I think me and Nick had also both recently just done a rewatch of Parks and Rec, so that mm-hmm. won by like one point. Oh, uh, okay. And then the Office was number two. I would have thought it was the Office, Parks and Rec, then Thirty Rock. But it could change day to day. Anyway, check that out. It's on Squirrel Friends. I like Parks and Rec hour. better than. 30 rock on. Yeah, that's good. Um, is that well, it? Do you want to wrap it up? We did did you did write down that well outro, right? Um, this is it. I mean, like I, for some reason, like I don't know. This week was kind of like there wasn't a lot going on. No, I just had my ex Maybe and I my, missed, well, yeah. there was a lot going on in the world, but not things that we're gonna talk about here. Yeah, so we're not, we're not um, we want to say thank you for joining us on the pot in the city weekly roundup. What we need you to do, babes, is like and subscribe. Oh. PATC pod. Yeah. Well, you're playing the music, right? Yeah, but I couldn't hear you for a second. Oh, okay. We're talking. I'll play it again. Um, <laughs> go to our Insta. And then if you want, again, hours, I'm talking almost days worth of extra content, check out our Patreon. It's really fun over there. And it's a lovely little community. We talk about a little bit about more of our actual personal lives too. So if you want to hear some stories anyway check like it out at patreon.com fat, fat lemons yeah you keep missing the lies but that's okay because we need a crew over there in the rewatch category we do like those comments up and like and subscribe please subscribe. and you know what i'd love to can you guys leave us a comment under the videos that we post just like literally started. nothing you could write nothing you could write whatever happened to masculine men <laughs> y'all <laughs> We love go, you. Oh, go to that post on the ASMR and just keep talking about it. Yeah, yes, go on that and troll out. Um, Swift Heart Rainbow, which I believe is Mandisha? Amanda slash Mandesha. Yep. Okay. She wrote that they're trash. She wrote your trash to the person. Oh, good. I was See, like, there we go. Love you. Um, so right, I love guys. you guys, or we love you guys, and we'll talk yeah. to you soon. Walter, we're we're gonna we're done. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.